Hey guys, this is Greg from Cutting Mechanics, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how I do dual wielding. My tools today are two aluminum Yaidos. This is a Wagazashi size. This is a Kokatana size. They're totally unsharpened. And also, what's nice about these two is that if you do accidentally clash them, it's not going to cause any permanent damage. I wouldn't hit them all out, but if you do accidentally hit them, if you're doing a pattern, it's not going to be the end of the world. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to start from my hands, work to my shoulders, hips, and then legs. Now, first off is how you grip the sword. As you can see here, these two fingers are gripping here. My uh, pinky and my ring finger. And then I leave a lot of play though. So my middle finger and my index finger here are left pretty loose and open. So I can have a lot of play. And this is going to be important because a lot of the power that comes from dual swords is in the snap. That's how I generate power in a small distance with only one hand. So the hands are very, very important. And these two fingers here also, I think of them as my steering wheel for my edge. So these two control where the edge goes. Okay? Now, next is going to be what my shoulder and my arms do. As I mentioned before, I, I usually cut with a snap on it. That's how I accelerate the blade to where I want it to go. So, my arm is relaxed. This is my first fixed position here, where my swords start off for this cut. And it's going to be an open downward diagonal. I come out. My hand comes out, and it's almost like, it, it's kind of similar to as, as if I'm doing like fishing. I'm shooting it out, or if you're doing your downward splits. I come out, I lift a little bit, and I snap at the apex of my cut here, and snap for that little bit of acceleration to push me through the mat. And I do that with my off hand as well, and I'm just going to alternate one, two. Now, my elbow stay loose, snap, chest goes down, my shoulders extend up now. I'm extending my shoulders so that I can engage my upper body mass behind it. I need to have as much mass as I can so that I don't destroy my arms trying to power through. Shoulders extend up. One, two. The fingers lead the wrist, leads the shoulders. Transfer of energy all the way down to my shoulders. And with my shoulders then, so I don't mess up my back until I get as much body weight and mass behind it, my hips are going to follow. Shoulders turn, hips follow. Turn, follow. Turn, follow. Okay, so once again, comes out, finds the apex, snaps. Hand snaps into position. Elbow snaps into position. Shoulder extends out, hip follows. Now, the last component is very important. This is going to be my feet. When I practice, and also when I cut two of these, I traditionally go into a cat stance. My foot comes up, turns out, and it points forward. 90% of my weight is on my back foot, 10% of my weight is on my front foot. The reason why I do this is because I found that it can give me the most amount of body mass that I can get. And it turns my body and I can catapult my arms out. Now you gotta be really, really careful when you're doing this that your arms never go all the way extended. You also wanna have a slight little bend at the end and you'll save your elbows. Very important though to keep that in mind, especially if you get into heavier swords. So let's go from the top again. Wrist comes out, elbow, shoulder, hip, foot, transfers, energy transfers here, across my body, down, through my hips, and my foot stabilizes. The cat stance is a little bit awkward. That's why I practice it, because it makes me get used to really reaching and really engaging my entire body. When I'm cutting, I will use the cat stance, or I'll also step out into like a forward bow, where my weight transfers forward. This may be easier, but I still prefer the cat stance, because it also keeps me more agile as well. Now, the other important thing here, and this is kind of important for freestyle cutting in general, at least I found, is you can practice your timing. One, two, one, two, one, two. Find where the cut works for your body. Maybe it's faster for you, maybe you're smaller. One, two, maybe you're bigger. One, two, but find your timing though. And one thing I found really useful is doing this in two minute segments. Not counting how many I do when I train, but doing a two minute segment, getting that cadence in my head, hammering it in, getting my body to remember it every single time so that when I cut later on, I have that cadence ingrained in these cuts. The other thing is too, is that one thing I found, if you think about transferring over what you learned from one hand into dual swords, it becomes a little bit troublesome. And one of the reasons behind this, and the biggest roadblock I had was when I couldn't figure out how to make my single sword go into my double sword. I clashed my swords. I couldn't figure out how to accelerate it. 
don't think of it as using this hand and using this hand. Think about it as I'm using dual swords. That way, this is no longer my right hand. This is no longer my off hand, excuse me. This is now my right hand. This is my left hand. I'm not thinking about my dominant hand stronger. I just think right sword hand, left sword hand. When you change this mentality, you'll start to begin to adjust your body without even thinking about it because you don't have any more blocks anymore. You have total freedom to figure out the fixed positions you're going to need for more complex patterns later on down the road. So getting that roadblock out of the way, I think at least you know, for, for my dual wielding experience, has been very, very important. So hopefully this helps some of you guys out. I'm Greg from Cutting Mechanics, and I appreciate your time.